The Trojans take on the Knights right now on Quiz Kids. It's the Bay Area Quiz Kids. Brought to you by the San Mateo Credit Union. And now, the best host on the West Coast, Brad Friedman. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another day of Quiz Kids. Let's meet the first two teams right now. First, we have the Castro Valley Trojans. And they're taking on the Knights of Stuart Hall. Welcome, Jessica and gentlemen. Good luck today. Here's your first toss-up question. Although the correct title of this painting is La Gioconda, the masterpiece by Leonardo da Vinci is better known by what popular name? Leon. The Last Supper? No, oh. you can steal. Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa? That is right. For 25 points, the Mona Lisa was stolen from which museum in 1911? The Louvre. Right. And for 50 points, before it was a museum, the Louvre was a royal palace. But which French monarch moved his household from the Louvre in 1672? Louis XIV. For sign. No, he moved. Oh, yeah. Louis XIV. You got 50 points. Here's your next toss-up. The carbon microphone, kinetoscope, electric vote tabulator, stock ticker, and commercial light bulb were all invented by which... Sonny. Edison. That is right. For 25 points, Edison's Menlo Park wasn't in California, but in what eastern state? New York. New York. No, it was New Jersey. Why don't we stop and say hello to our teams? Over here in Castro Valley, we have Gordon Cole. You're a senior, Gordon, and you're really into computers. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I recently picked up computer programming, in fact, and... Are you taking this at school or outside of school? Uh, I'm taking a course in school and a course out of school, in fact. Oh, my goodness. So, so, as a senior, you must be thinking of your future. Will it have something to do with computers? That's true. Uh, yeah, for I, sure. I'm going to go into some I sure hope there some are some companies out thing. there that do that. I have no Good idea luck. where to look. But, Good luck okay. with that, yeah. <laughs> Sunny Joe, you are a senior also, and you are on the badminton team. I am. So your season must have started by now. How's yeah. it going? We're undefeated. We're undefeated. How I'm many always, games have you played? Uh, uh, two, uh, three. 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 There you three. go. Three. Well, it's better than one. True. That would have been a better joke, but you have won three out of three games. True. Congratulations. Keep, it, keep the birdies flying. Never stop. Jessica Yin, you're a junior. And you are in the student government? Yes, that's true. What is your position? Uh, I'm currently ASP treasurer. And where is the money right now? Uh, well, in my car. In your car, <laughs> right. And where's your car right now in case anyone would like to? Never mind. No. <laughs> Good, you, can, you guard that money, all right? Yeah. You do that. All right, Stuart Hall, Giancarlo Gratz, you're a sophomore, and you are um, a big traveler. Yeah. Now, Giancarlo, it suggests to me that you've been to Italy before. Yeah, uh, five times. Five times. What's your favorite part of Italy? Florence, probably. It's the most well, modern city, I'd say. Yeah? Yeah, I would love to see Florence. I'm hoping that the Quiz Kids producers will consider that for my lunch break. <laughs> Leon Tsai. Leon, you're also a sophomore. And uh, when I was in public school, um, uh, they, they offered Latin in public school. Of course, this was ancient Rome. But today, most public schools don't do it, but you do at Stewart Hall, right? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. And why do you like Latin so much? It's... It's, 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 really, it's really cool reading Virgil and the Aeneid and all, all those wonderful masterpieces. Very cool. You must be very popular, yes. Absolutely. I, I mean, do you, do you sometimes read that out loud at lunch and stuff? And Absolutely, you know. I'm a, I'm a hit with the girls. Yes, I, 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 you know what? Your humor is definitely a hit. That's cool. <laughs> Charlie O'Connell, a senior, and you uh, recently uh, did a triathlon. Yeah, I did. Um, <clears throat> Stanford? Over, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so... Uh, 20 mile bike, 500 uh, yard swim, and uh, 5K run, finishing in about a, an hour and 20 minutes. That's good. Yeah, I had I had a lot of fun. It was really challenging. Uh, at the end of it, I almost you know ended up throwing up, so I just sit down for like 20 minutes. Thank but, you for sharing that yeah. one too. <laughs> well, I'm good I, because I'd hate to think you were a Superman. So a oh little, yeah, a little uh, yeah, a little nausea makes you human. <laughs> and and. and Good luck with your next one. And let's continue with more Quiz Kids and the next toss-up question. Hermes bestowed a name meaning all gifted on what woman who became the wife of Epimetheus and released the world's evils? Sonny. Pandora. Yes. For 25 points, what 2008 presidential campaign slogan also names the only thing left in Pandora's box? Hope. That is right. And for 50 points... Bob Hope's Air, Bob Hope Airport's code letters are B U R. After what city in which the airport is located? Birmingham. Bur 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 
Burlingham? No, Burbank. Burbank, right near Los Angeles. Next toss up. Casimir Funk discovered and named what general class of molecules whose deficiency can cause diseases such as beriberi and scurvy? Charlie. Vitamins? That's right. For 25 points, which vitamin can be synthesized by sun exposure and is often added to milk? Vitamin D. That is correct. And for 50 points, what is the name for vitamin B3? Beta carotene? No, it's niacin. Niacin. Next toss up. What term for a market with a single dominant seller shares its name with a monopoly? That is right, Leon. For 25 points, the industries of corporate auditing, passenger jets, and automobiles are examples of what market form that is dominated by a few large sellers. Oligarchy. I don't know. Capitalism. No. Leon? Oligarchy. I don't know. Go with that. Um, an oligarchy. Cap capital market? No, it's an oligopoly. Oligopoly. Oh Next toss up. I got you. He called 1905 his Annus Mirabilis, that's some Latin there, Leon, or Miracle Year. Who published four papers that lead the foundation uh, for modern physics in that year? Yes, Charlie. Albert Einstein? That is right. For 25 points, Einstein assumed a quantum theory of light energy when explaining what effect in which particles of light eject electrons from a metal surface. Talk it over. Leon? Uh, relativity? Photoelectric effect. <laughs> Next toss up. The Conquer Republic was declared in this subtropical island. U.S. Highway 1 ends in what Florida town that's the southernmost point in the continental U.S.? Giancarlo. The Keys? I need something more specific. Oh. Um, Orlando? No, I'm sorry. You can steal. Miami? Miami? Sunny? Miami. No, you said Keys. It's Key West. Oh. We needed which Keys? Mm -hmm. Next toss up. This man sailed up his namesake river in 1609. Two years later, whose crew stranded him in a large Canadian bay that also bears his name? Jessica. Hudson. That is right. For 25 points, Canada's longest river, which flows from the Great Slave Lake to the Arctic Ocean, honors which Scottish explorer? Potomac. No, Sir Alexander Mackenzie. Next toss up. Which city sacked in 1204 during the. Yes, honey. Rome. No. Sacked in. Uh, which city, Stuart Hall, sacked in 1204 during the Fourth Crusade and captured by the Ottoman Empire in 1453, was renamed Istanbul in the 1920s? Constantinople. Correct. For 25 points, many in Istanbul commute from continent to continent when they cross what strait that bisects Istanbul? Leon. Just uh, the Bering Strait? The Bosporus. Mm. That is the end of the round. 95 for Castro Valley, 55 for Stuart Hall. Let's see who wins when we return. Thank you for your applause and thank you to the coaches of both teams who are here with us today. First from Castro Valley, Ms. Jerry Cox. And from Stuart Hall, Mr. Shannon Hawker. Thank you both so much for all your hard work. All right, Stuart Hall, you have 55 points. All you need is two correct answers to take the lead. The Correct answers are each worth 30 points. We have three categories for you. You get to choose which one you want. Today we have in the Ballpark, Bravo Charlie, and What a Maroon. Which category would you like? We will take In the Ballpark. In the Ballpark. You are going to give me uh, an answer which is a defensive position in baseball. Okay? I'm going to try and say it in more of a jock voice, okay? Because Which defensive position in baseball is called the hot corner? Left field? Uh, no, that's third, third base. base. Yeah. Third base. Uh, which position is replaced in the lineup by the DH? Pitcher. That's right. Which is denoted nine when scoring plays? Pitcher. No, it's a right fielder. Oh, the right, right fielder, okay. yeah. Maybe I should talk like a normal guy. Mm, yeah. Uh, which position was manned by who in an Abbott and Costello routine? Yeah. First. 
That is right. First base. Uh, which position <clears throat> forms the battery with the pitcher? Catcher. Yes. Uh, which position is the pivot in a 6-4-3 double play? Second base. You got it. And finally, which position may be charged with a passed ball? Catcher. You got it. That's uh, six correct or five correct, and you have 205 points. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, Castro Valley, you need four correct answers to win. Which category would you like? Bravo, Charlie, or what a maroon? Bravo, Charlie, sir. Bravo, Charlie, sir. All right. <laughs> Name these people, places, or things used to represent a letter in the NATO phonetic alphabet. We're looking for the full word, not just the letter. Okay? It's the capital city of Peru. Sunny. Lima. That's right. It takes two to do this ballroom dance. Tango. Tango. Right. She was the nymph who loved Narcissus. Echo. Right. If you get this one correctly, you will win the game. It's the Greek letter used to represent a finite change. Delta. Delta. You have won the game. Congratulations, Castro Valley. Thank you both for playing. We'll be right back with two more teams. Don't go away. It is time for the second match of the day. Let's meet the teams. First, we have the Burlingame High School Panthers. And in this corner, the Homestead High School Mustangs. Gentlemen, welcome and good luck. Here's your first toss-up question. The Neva River circles what Russian city that borders the Gulf of Finland? Brandon. St. Petersburg. Right. For 25 points. In 1924, St. Petersburg was renamed after what Bolshevik leader? Lenin. Yes. And for 50 points, St. Petersburg is one place you can go to experience which early summer phenomenon where twilight lasts all night? Midnight sun? Yeah, sure. Midnight sun? No, I'm sorry. It's the white nights. Okay. Here's your next toss-up. This is the non-metal element found in table salt. Elliot. Um, chlorine. That is right. For 25 points, Chlorine, along with bromine and iodine, is a member of which group of the periodic table? Halogens. Right, and for 50 points, which heaviest known halogen has no stable isotopes? Um, it's astatine, I think. Astatine. You got 50 points. <laughs> Next toss up. The Obsidian Cliffs and Grand Prismatic Spring are landmarks here. William. Yellowstone. That is right. For 25 points, which Oregon National Park's main attraction is an ultra-clear 2,000-foot deep lake in the wreckage of Mount Mazama? Crater Lake. Right. And for 50 points, which park in the Wachita Mountains of Arkansas attracts visitors who want to soak in therapeutic waters? Hot Springs. That is right for 50 points. We're starting off strong, so let's stop and meet our teams. Panthers and Drew Ehrlich. Uh, Drew, um, you just recently teched the spring play. What was the spring play? It's an unusual one. It was Radium Girls. Uh-huh. And how'd it go? It went really well, actually. They're a larger, l very large audience. I think we broke a couple records. And what does Radium Girls tell the story of? Of some watchmakers, um, watch style painters in the 1920s who suffered, um, who had to go through a big court case because the radium was killing them. Elliot Kane, you are the sophomore class vice president. Yes. But that's almost up. The year's almost over, and you don't want to leave student government, so you're yeah. running for something again. I'm running for ASB secretary. You want to run the school now. Yes, okay. I do. <laughs> so what do you think your chances are? I think I have a very high chance. Of running. High chance? Yes. Running unopposed? No, I have one. Okay, well, yeah. good. I was just checking. Good. <laughs> well, you beat that person. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob Cohen, your favorite subject is science. Yeah, my favorite subject is science, and I take classes at San Mateo after school. To, in, in biotechnology. In biotechnology, as well as at school you take? Chemistry. Chemistry, wow. Foolish, foolish Jacob. <laughs> Science, huh? What are you going to do with that, Jacob? I, I ask you, you know. Let's say hi to the Homestead Mustangs and Brandon Heron. Um, you uh, are a real math guy, and you used your math skills to make predictions in the 2012 elections. You did pretty well. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got um, all the states right. Like, I predicted which ones Romney would win and which ones Obama would win. 
Yeah, yeah, and you say you use math for that, not like that's a blue state. Oh that's no, actually, a red state. I just grabbed like a magic eight ball and like spinned it, and then you know. Wow, how scientific! Yeah. You should <laughs> talk agree. to Jacob. I think you guys would make a great team. Yeah. <laughs> Karthik, Karthik Srivatsan, you are in the choir. You have been for four years. Yes. You are bass. Yes, I am. They must love you. <laughs> um, well, I, I've as a choir member for four years. I guess you could say I've gained something of a leadership role in the choir. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. It's good. It's not like a one-note situation. You, you, um, you, We've you had give, some of those, You give too. voice to the choir or whatever. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll stop. William Scott, you're a math whiz. Yes. And you love math competitions. I do love math competitions. I think a lot of people now are getting very excited out in our, in our homes. So tell us about your last math competition. Well, you know, the last math competition I wanted to go to was actually canceled. But the last math competition well, I did take was... Uh, the AMC 10, and I'm really bummed because I missed the cutoff for the next round by one question. Oh, so I'm gonna do I'm better sorry. next year. Uh, if it makes you feel better, I would have done better at the ones that were canceled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back to the game and your next toss up question. We must all hang together, or we shall most assuredly all hang separately. Was Karthik? Benjamin Franklin? No. Uh, was Ben Franklin's admonition to the members of what body? Um, Continental Congress. Continental Congress. That's right. For fifty, uh, sorry, for twenty-five points, his statement is said to have been made at the signing of what document? Constitution. Um, Declaration of Declaration of Independence. Correct. And for fifty points, in seventeen eighty-nine, Franklin was quoted as saying, "Our Constitution is an actual operation. Everything appears to promise that it will last, but in this world, nothing is certain but what." Two things. Death and taxes. Death and taxes. You got 50 points. <laughs> that Franklin was a witty man. <laughs> Next, toss up. It was predicted as early as 1960, but not finally observed until July 2012. What so called God particle drew? Uh, the, oh, Higgs boson. That's right. For 25 points, the first observation of the Higgs boson took place at what Geneva facility that operates the Large Hadron Collider? CERN. That is right. And for 50 points, that same month, what author of the Grand Design admitted he lost a bet that Higgs boson wouldn't be found? Um, um, Elliot. No, no answer. That could be Stephen Hawking. Uh, hmm. Next toss-up. Dashiell Hammett could tell you that the 16th century Knights of Malta paid their rent to the Holy Roman Empire with what raptors? That was my film noir voice, believe it or not. <laughs> and we're looking for the Maltese Falcon. The Maltese oh, okay. Falcon. <laughs> and the rest of the questions were really great, so I'm mad at you for not getting that one right. Let's move on before I cry. <laughs> what is the name of the chemical process in which polymer chains of rubber molecules are exposed to sulfur and Karthik? Vulcanization. Yeah, you get that right, but you don't know the Maltese Falcon. <laughs> sure. For 25 points, buddy, which rubber company is named for the discoverer of vulcanization? Goodyear. That's right. And for 50 points, Vulcan was his Roman name. What did the Greeks Hephaestus. call this god of fire and the forge? Hephaestus. You got 50 points. <laughs> Next toss up. The flag of the District of Columbia is based on whose family coat of arms? Drew. Washington. That's right. For 25 points, although Washington, D.C. has no representatives in Congress, it does carry how many electoral votes in presidential elections? Okay. Uh, three? Yes. <laughs> and for 50 points, because the district sends no representatives to Congress, in 2000, the D.C. Department of Motor Vehicles began issuing license plates with what phrase? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, Elliot. Uh, e pluribus unum? <laughs> <laughs> no. Remember how clever and funny those guys were back at the Continental Congress? Taxation without representation. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next toss up. Hobart is the capital of what Australian island is Drew? Tasmania. Yes. For 25 points, which studio's cast of cartoon characters added the Tasmanian Devil in 1954? I don't know. Uh, Elliot? Looney, uh, Looney Tunes? <laughs> uh, no, it was Warner Brothers was the studio. Looney Tunes was the name of the series. And we have 160 for Burlingame, 125 for Homestead. Let's find out who wins when we return. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Let's take a moment to say thank you to the coaches for both our teams. First, from Burlingame, Mr. Dave Sullivan. And from Homestead, Mr. Jason Scott. Thank you, boys. We appreciate all that you do. All right. Homestead, you're not too far behind. The correct answers are worth 30 points. You only need two to take the lead. Uh, and we have three categories to offer you. Today they are Race to the Top, Anatomically Correct, and Import. We're going to take Import. Import. All right. So I'm going to give you the name of a city. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to give you a port city, and you give me the name of the state that you can find that city in. Okay? The city of Long Beach. California. California. Right. Corpus Christi. Texas. Texas, yeah. Texas. You've got the lead. New Orleans. Louisiana. Louisiana. Hampton Roads. Oh, um, oh Virginia, maybe? Um, yeah, yeah. Virginia. Right. Valdez. Oh, Alaska. Okay. Yeah. Alaska. That's right. Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle. Delaware, maybe? Um, okay. I don't know for sure. Uh, Delaware. Yes. And finally, Tacoma. Uh, Washington. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, I think. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Washington. You swept the category. Congratulations. <laughs> That means Burley game needs to get six correct answers in order to win this game, okay? Gentlemen, would you like race to the top or anatomically correct? Race to the top. Race to the top. All right. Which of the seven continents is home to the tallest mountain that I will name, okay? The mountain known as Mount Godwin Austin or K2. Which continent can you find it on? Asia. Right. Mount Kilimanjaro. Africa. Africa. Mount Logan. Elliot? Oh, Oceana. Uh, no, North America. You need to get all the rest of them correct in order to win the game. Vincent Massif. South America. South America. Antarctica. Homestead, you won the game. Congratulations. Well played. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.